Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 4, Feeling in Control. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Andrew Exton. During this remote learning period, what I'm going to be doing is from time to time having some discussions with some of our staff and some students about how they're going through this period of remote learning. I think the one thing that I've realised is that as we continue, as we're about to start this second period, none of us are feeling okay about this and we're all struggling. And sometimes it's important to hear from the teachers that stand in front of, your, in, front of you in class time how they're actually travelling through remote learning because I think we're all in this together and that's never been truer. So our first interviewee is Mr Steve Parker, who you'd know as an English language teacher, the English coordinator, a Year 12 homeroom teacher and also um, just an all-round good guy. That's what I'm going to say. So, Steve, thanks for coming on board. Um, I suppose the first question I'd ask you from a personal point of view We've been in remote learning. We came back as year 11 and 12 students. Then we had seven to 10 students for a little while. Then we had another lockdown period where it was just year 11 and 12 students. And then obviously because of our positive case last week, we had a shutdown and now we're in this lockout, lockdown again for six weeks. How are you feeling about it all? Ah, Mr. Exton, thank you so much for asking that question. And thanks for having me on too, by the way. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm feeling good. Um, I am. I, I certainly would much rather be in the classroom. I'd much rather be seeing the students face to face. But I'm feeling a lot more confident about the whole enterprise than I was uh, first time around. Um, it was certainly a learning curve for me. I always found one of the best things about being a teacher is that you get to have human interaction and you get to experience uh, lots of different personalities on a day-to-day basis. To have that taken away to some extent uh, is difficult, but I'm becoming a bit of a master when it comes to Zoom these days, and uh, I think I'm getting the hang of it, thank you. So you never expected to have to do this a second time round. Are there any things that you're consciously doing, first of all, that are different from the first time around? Are you, did you, have you felt that you did take learnings from the first period and that you're doing some things differently, probably to help you and also to help your students as well? Yeah, I'm doing a lot of things different, uh, Mr. Exton. Um, one thing I have certainly learned is that you can't always plan the unpredictable. And I know certainly in the, in the first wave of remote learning, uh, I perhaps I was guilty of trying to be too prepared. Uh, I was trying to pre- prepare and plan for things um, when I didn't really know how remote learning would, would unfold. So I found myself as a coordinator making decisions about various different year levels. Uh, and then once the uh, realities of remote learning took place and I found that it wasn't as easy for students to get as much done in the time frame of a normal lesson as they would if they were at school, uh, a few other things that, that weren't practical, you know, I had to make changes. And I guess what I've learned is that it's really important to be, be adaptable, to be flexible, to be willing to, to change plans and I think one thing about remote learning that myself, you know, yourself, no doubt, all teachers, but also students are going to learn and, and become particular masters of it, is being flexible. You know, I think um, in our life beyond this particular year, um, we'll suddenly have so much more up our sleeves when it comes to adapting to the circumstances that life suddenly throws at us unexpectedly. Yeah, I think um, if I was to offer my own personal opinion, I- it's trying to narrow my focus down to what I can control. And, you know, the bits I can control are the periods of time that I have with students in my class. I can't control the bigger decisions. I can't control everything that's going on, even within our school setting. So 
narrowing your focus and just focusing on the little things that you can control um, make it a lot easier. Do you, are you positive with regards to how your students are feeling about this time around? I am positive. I, look, I'm not. I'm not naive either. There are students who um, who fluctuate in, in mood. There are those who are who are feeling good one day and then the next they're feeling a little less so. Um, but I want those students to rec to, to recognise that this, that's the feeling that we all have. You know, all teachers I've been speaking to are feeling the same way, and that that goes for me too. I'm I'm up and down, but overwhelmingly I'm certainly feeling more positive about it. Um, I think most of my students are feeling more positive about it, and you know, in discussions with the students that I teach. Um, certainly, I'm, I'm modifying the way that I run my classes to, to suit their needs. And I suppose it's a point like this that I remind students that if they feel that a, a, a teacher of theirs could be doing something a little bit different, they're, they're more than welcome to suggest a few things because, uh, you know, we all want, obviously, the best for the student. And I think this time around, obviously, a significant difference will be that students will need to complete assessment remotely, which they didn't during the last period. But I think, I know from a, a coordinator's perspective, I'd like to think that our students don't fear that too much, that we'll be able to, you know, conduct the assessment in a way that mirrors as close as we can to school and in a way that is not going to provide students with any more anxiety or any more stress that might be associated with completing assessment. Absolutely. And look, it will be different and there'll be a learning curve involved in that as well. But I think it won't be anything more radical or anything more terrifying than what students have already gone through. I think students will find uh, the prospect of doing their assessment at home, uh, if need be, something that they'll be able to adapt to quite quickly. Now, I didn't want to make this all about school, sir. I wanted students to get a bit of an insight into you as a person and, and maybe what things you're doing during this time. Now, I don't know how many students are aware of this because you do keep it reasonably quiet is you're part of a a richmond mafia type group group at mckillop college of staff that are quietly you know very rabid richmond fans and you've gone through periods of immense frustration that i've witnessed personally myself to periods of great euphoria i'm wondering um as a football fan and enjoying football as much as you do. How are you finding the experience this year of almost feeling like you're watching your team play football on Mars as you watch from Jupiter? Is it, is it still as enjoyable or is that one of the things that you're missing, the, the, the routine of going to football and enjoying time with friends and that sort of thing? Yeah, another great question. Look, there's no doubt about it. I still love the footy. Um, I initially thought when that, that first round took place and there were no crowds and it was just a, a stony silence on the TV and uh, we just heard, heard the, the players talking to themselves that maybe the AFL this year wouldn't, wouldn't be quite as engaging or as enticing and I, I wouldn't be as excited. But no, I'm finding I'm absolutely loving it. It's, it's one of the things that is still relatively normal in a very abnormal year. Um, you know, me still... You know, yelling and screaming at the TV, um, you know, teasing and taunting, uh, you know, my my fellow football lovers who bury the teams that are not quite as brilliant as the Tigers, you know. Including myself. Absolutely. That's exactly what I was alluding to, yeah. <laughs> um, look, no, I love the footy and um, I must say, do I miss actually physically going to the game, you know, with the group of mates that I would typically go to the game with? Yep, absolutely. You know, but I'm missing that, like I miss, I guess, contact with, you know, a lot of, dear friends and families I'm not seeing at the moment. Um, but, you know, when I watch a game of footy on the TV at the moment, I've got, I've got my, my phone next to me. I've got Messenger digging away constantly as uh, Dusty kicks another screamer. Um, I, I'm loving it. I think it's a, it's, a really, it's a really exciting time, actually, to be watching the footy right now. Now, you, um, another thing that students might not know, you're a, you love your animals and you're a dog lover and you've got a new pet after a, a p period of time. Are you finding, like me, that your pet is looking at you in the morning and then during the day with a, with a really inquisitive face going, why are you still here? Is it, I've actually found it amazing how much my dog has picked up the fact that routine and everything has changed. Have you found that as well? And have you enjoyed, I suppose, 
almost taking your dog out for a lot of walks for your own sake rather than for his? <laughs> it's very true, yes. I think sometimes uh, when I've perhaps pushed the walk a little bit too far and our young puppy is uh, giving me the look as I come on, come on, Dad, you know, let's wrap it up. Uh, I get the feeling that maybe I'm thinking of myself more than him. Um, look, he, he's only young. He's not a year old yet, so he's still learning routines. I think because my wife works from home and uh, because I've been at home so much this year, I think life for him is almost one where mum and dad are home most of the time. So I'm actually more worried about what life will be like when I do return to school and uh, my wife is out doing her work more often. Um, I find that... You know, on the occasions where we've had to pop out, if we've had a doctor's appointment or we've had to do a little bit of shopping, um, when we get back, inevitably, a portion of my backyard will be destroyed. So um, when it has to be a full day, when I'm at work, and uh, as I said, my wife is away for a whole day, I, oh, God forbid the destruction that I'll see out there. A couple of final questions. I'm going to ask you about the backdrop in which you um, do this uh, little podcast. It's full of impressive books and I often associate English teachers, obviously, with people that enjoy reading and stuff. First of all, have you read all the books in the bookcase? And is reading a pastime that you have found yourself doing more of during this period? Or have you actually found it hard to sort of balance? And I think I, my biggest issue has been trying to balance the lines between work and home and leisure time and work. Because you're at home, it's a lot difficult. So. Firstly, the bookcase, and second of all, do you still enjoy reading, and, and what are you reading at the moment if you are? Yeah, look, I, I do. I do love reading still. Um, I'm not going to lie. I, I feel the same way as you. That, that balance between you know, work and home life is, is blurring a little bit at the moment, um, and I often find myself working uh, much later into the evening than I was actually doing prior to remote learning. You know, I, I think you know, it's very easy to, to sit in your office in the you know, the hours tick away and then you say to yourself, my goodness, you know, this is, this is well beyond what would normally be a clock off time uh, if I was working in the office of school. So um, as a result of that, I'm probably reading less for leisure now than I, than I have been um, prior to remote learning. And I think also because there's so much screen time and you know, there's so much more physical writing of lesson plans and instructions for students and I'm responding to so many emails on a day and um, I'm checking OneNote pretty regularly to see what work my students have posted up. I think when I need a break at the moment, reading isn't at the forefront of my mind. I'm finding myself watching a bit more sport. I'm certainly listening to a lot of music, which is my other passion. Um, so I think that's probably what I've been doing more than reading. Uh, I do look forward to an opportunity soon, you know, to stick my teeth into a good book, because what you see behind me, Mr. X, then that, I've probably only read a small portion of, of what you see. You know, they're all waiting there for me. And um, finally, sir, what What's one thing you're looking forward to doing when life is normal? Oh, it's, such a, it's such a good question. I mean, it, it's not one you can I don't know, narrow down to just one thing. Um, there are so many people that I want to see. Um, look, I, my, my family um, consists of my father, who is in his 80s now, and my grandmother, who's actually 96, would you believe? Um, I really just look forward to seeing them, you know, and spending a dinner over at their place and uh, just uh, enjoying some quality time with my family, I think, is the, the number one thing that I'll be doing. That's great. And for what it's worth, Mr Parker, I'll be looking forward to going to a final against Richmond at the MCG and sitting behind some anonymous Richmond fans and celebrating a North Melbourne win, which <laughs> might mean that we're both a lot less with a lot less hair or you more than me and we're a lot greyer than we might otherwise be. But thanks for, um, thanks for um, coming on board and we hope that these little podcasts give students a bit of an insight into how we're, we're feeling as teachers because I think we are all in this together one way or another and we're all going to have a point of time where we're actually going to be able to go back to the way things were. So um, good luck with um, everything. Good luck with uh, Richmond for the rest of the season. I think you... You might be watching a grand final from the Wacker or from Optus Oval or something, which will be another experience, but I'm sure you'll count it as a meaningful premiership like all the others. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Exeter. It's been, you know, it's been a delight to talk to you. I really appreciate being asked. And uh, to all the listeners out there, I'm looking forward to seeing you all in person, hopefully very soon. Thanks, sir, and you take care. That brings us to the end of this episode. 
A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and take care.